In this lecture of the course, we're going to cover Scrum values. And there's five Scrum values. Commitment, courage, focus, openness, and respect. Again, all of them really easy to understand, really straightforward, really pretty much self-explanatory. So what does this, all of these you know, different values, what do they mean actually in the world of Scrum? What commitment is that if you're trying to deliver something, you actually fully commit on delivering that on time and on budget and as planned, right? And that's why in Scrum, we have our different artifacts, right? And we talked about the different artifacts, such as the burn down chart, the Scrum Kanban board, and your velocity chart, which allows you to see how you're meeting those commitments, how you're doing versus what you, you know, are focusing on trying to deliver, right? And then courage. Courage is about trying to sometimes think outside the box, trying to do things differently. Courage is about, you know, having that energy and that strength to make those tough decisions when you need to make them. Sometimes you need to change, you know, the order or take a different direction or take a dif different path because it's not working as you expected. And that's something that in Scrum we learn through our retrospectives, right? So I'll give you a perfect example of courage. And, and this is something that happened to me not that long ago when we were working on, on when I was working on, on a project and I was actually using Scrum in that project. So we went through a couple of sprints and then I noticed that we had reached a 3% completion rate of what we had projected to complete, right? And to put that into context, when I looked at the stats and I saw that we were, we were at a 3% completion rate, we should have been really at about at a 50, 60% completion rate. And I knew we were running out of time. We're getting close to the end of the year. And I, you know, sat down, did the math, look at, you know, I looked at the previous sprints, looked at our velocity, which is pretty much our rate of execution, and then looked at where we were in terms of completion. And then I for, forward projected what we would accomplish by the end of the year, right? And at that time, like I said, we were only at a 3% completion rate. So when I did that exercise, I realized that if we continue at the same pace, we'd hit the end of the year with you know less than 60% of completion of what we, had, we were trying to achieve. So obviously that wasn't acceptable and something needed to change. So I, you know, the team and I, we, you know, we talked about it in a retrospective and thought about what we needed to do and we thought we need to completely change the delivery strategy we need to completely change the way you know we're working on this and basically what we did was because before we were getting kind of the people that were working on uh, some key stakeholders to provide some information for us and that was always taking a lot longer than we had expected or anticipated and when they were providing the information the information wasn't really organized and it was less than we were expecting so we said, you know, let's completely change the strategy. Let's let's take the data ourselves. Let's look at the data ourselves. Let's put a plan in place. Let's propose that to the, you know, to the stakeholders. And we'll work on that unless they tell us they want any changes. But we're actually doing the inverse. Instead of asking them to provide, you know, the organized data for us to work on, we did it the other way around. We provided the organized data for them and said, okay, we've looked at everything. This is how we're going to be doing it. And this is how we're going to be doing our sprints. This is the work that we're going to do, be doing in each sprint. And we said to them, you know, we've kind of taken ownership of your data, but we want to let you know that it's not set in stone. If you want us to make changes, we can make changes. We're flexible. We're adaptable. But that helped, guys. And that was, you know, we had the courage to completely change the strategy, to talk to all of our stakeholders about the change in strategy, to you know, acknowledge, we had the courage to acknowledge that it, you know what we were doing wasn't working as, as we had expected, and that's what you know that's what that value is in is in Scrum. You know, to have the courage to do those type of things, to make those hard decisions, and to have sometimes those difficult conversations, and to acknowledge sometimes that things are not going how you expected them, how you expected them. All right, so let, let's go and let's move on to the third value, which is focus. Again, this has to do a lot with the focus on execution and that we're looking at, you know, a very short period of time frame, which is our, our sprint, right? So, we, you know, in, in Scrum, we're not focusing on, you know, longer term deliverables and kind of like we're, we're trying to not look at the, you know, that big picture all the time, but more look at the short term and, fo and have a strong focus on the short term delivery. And that's why this is one of those key Scrum values. Openness we talked about before, and this is very closely related to transparency, to people, you know, 
uh, being able to visualize what everybody's doing to people being, you know, able to talk to each other. And, and, and of course, this uh, relates to also things that we saw before, like the pillars and, and the principles. And then finally, respect. Respect is definitely a big value in in Scrum. And it's, it's you know, we encourage people to be, you know, to speak up and, and to always be respected regardless of the, them having a different opinion. And we actually love that in Scrum. We actually love people having you know, different opinions or, or, you know, we're open to that. We're very flexible because if we need to change something in Scrum, we're going to do it. You know, if something's not working well and, and you know, uh, people have that openness with us to talk about it, we're going to respect their opinion. We're going to take it into account. And if we are, if we th feel on a, as a Scrum team, we, we think we need to make changes, we're going to make those changes really quickly. We're not going to wait until the end of the project where, where everything's falling apart. We're going to do this change even before we start the next sprint. All right. So that's what... You know that's how the and that's where the that those six scrum values are uh, um you know these five scrum values are all about this is where these five value, scrum values are all about and i think like i said before they're, they're pretty self-explanatory and by now you're probably thinking well, well why do we have to even talk about pillars and values and principles and i'll tell you why i'll tell you why you know the reason is because scrum beyond being a, a, a methodology or, or a framework for doing things it's actually also a culture. Here's, here's a little secret for you, and, and I want you to take note about this. Scrum is also a culture, right? And you build culture with things like principles, with things like values, with things like pillars, all right? So I know this sounds a bit, sometimes when people look at this, uh, it sounds a bit like uh, theoretical, I guess, and, and sometimes people see, it, oh, it's just something that's, that's up there in a, in, a, in a piece of paper or you know, something that, that's up there, but it, it doesn't really happen on, in, on the ground and, and in practice. And actually, you know, that's what I want to challenge in your, in your mentality, if that's what you're thinking as you were going through these lectures in the course, is that actually in Scrum, we do apply this. You know, actually in Scrum, we do believe this. Actually in Scrum, we build a culture around these things, right? Because all of these actually interconnected builds trust. And trust is super important for us to deliver what we want to deliver on time, on budget, and exceed everyone's expectations. And you're going to see these guys that when people are working together in Scrum, they start to develop their, a really strong relationship with each other because they're applying these you know, principal values and because these pillars are, are holding all of them together you know, in, a very, in a very cohesive and comprehensive way. And... and like I said, it just over time it starts to become a culture, and people get into it. You know, after a, you know, initially, of course, as people are learning Scrum, some of these might not be immediately reflected, of course, because they're just getting you know themselves familiarized with the culture of, of Scrum and with the different you know values, principles, and the different you know pillars that are part of it, and, and just the different artifacts, components. You know, the terminology sometimes is just different for people as well. But what you're going to see happen over time as people are going through the different sprints is that people start embracing this very strongly. And, and the reason why people embrace this, and, and like I said before, is guys, it's not a coincidence that Scrum is the most popular Agile methodology out there. The reason why it becomes, uh, you know, so strongly ingrained in, in the culture and why people, uh, you know, start really getting on, on the bus of Scrum is, is because they see the value in it. It's because they see that things are happening a lot faster versus they were before you implemented Scrum. Or versus before, before when, when you were working with uh, you know traditional uh, project management uh, methodologies. So that's why people really like it. And, and I'm not just talking about management, by the way. You know, and of course management is going to love anything that's faster and, and that delivers results faster. That, that's that's pretty obvious to me, and I'm sure it's pretty obvious to you as well. But I think you know the reason why you know people on the ground, people that are actually doing the work, really like Scrum is because they see the benefit. You know, and people are always going to like things where they see the benefit for themselves where they see the benefit for the rest of the team, where they see the benefit for the business, where they see the benefit for the customer, they're always gonna love those things. And that's why Scrum is so powerful. And, and I'm sure that as you're working with it, you're gonna start seeing all of these and you're gonna start becoming more and more, you know, a Scrum advocate. And some of you, you know, going through this course might actually want to take on the role of Scrum Master. And we're gonna talk a little bit later on more about the role of Scrum Master. And it's definitely, you know, one of the paths is uh, one of the paths that many people want to want to go into, and it's a great path. You know, there's a lot of job opportunities out there for uh, Scrum masters and and for people that know Scrum. You know, it's it's a very big in-demand 
topic. You know, there's a lot of jobs out there for people that want to apply Agile and Scrum. All right. So I definitely, I guess, hope that you know, as I've talked about this, you you realize and 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 you know, these things, in, in, I guess, in your mind and in your heart, that even though we're talking about these values, principles, pillars, and, and so forth. It's not just theory, it's actually practice and it's actually building up that culture. And, and I think, uh, you know, the more you put it into practice, the more you understand uh, what I'm saying with this. And, and it'll, it'll make more and more sense to you once you see it in practice and when you, once you actually start applying this yourself. Now, in this lecture, I want to cover Scrum resources that are out there that are super valuable for you to review. And I'm not going to go into all of this into detail in this course because, you know, it's something you can research on your own and this is a scrum crash course and in this course you know i'm covering the key concepts and everything you need to know about scrum and part of that is you knowing that there's a lot more resources that you can you know get access to and most of them are free if not all of them and uh you know you can find things like the scrum guide online and you can either you know look at the website or you can actually just download it as a pdf and i'm going to put the links here for you so you can go into each and every one of these valuable scrum resources that are making available for you as part of this course so the scrum guide like i said before it's the bible of scrum and you can find that when you go to scrum.org you'll find there on the scrum.org website the scrum guide and access to it and you know how to download the scrum guide or just look at it if you want to look at it but like i said i'll also include all of that here in this course and the scrumalliance.org this is another, you know, resource uh, that you can access and you can find a lot of valuable information. And by the way, a lot of them have some little short videos that I'm sure you're going to find really useful and valuable that will help you understand everything we've covered in this course even more. And it's always good, I guess, to see, you know, and, and to access information from different uh, people and different resources because it just allows you to complement your learning. And I mentioned before when we talked about, you know, the origins of Scrum, that these two, you know, Scrum.org and Scrum Alliance, you know, the you know the fathers of Scrum, uh, you know, have actually also either founded or co-founded, you know, Scrum.org, Scrum Alliance.org, and and you know, the sometimes they're still even very active in those uh, in those uh, groups as well. And ScrumStudy.com is another place where you can find information about Scrum. You know, there's also and certifications there and, and, and pretty much all of these different you know organizations or groups that have you know come about uh, to share knowledge about scrum also offer their their own certifications and uh, you know if you ask me whether you need to get them I, I don't think you have to you know i think you already you know as you're going through this course you're pretty much not going to learn really anything too different in any of those other courses that they're offering you there but you know if you do want to get those certifications well they're they're out there and they're offering you know different pricing options for you to review and, and to explore and that's entirely up to you but you know feel free to you know after you finish this course put it on your cv it's you know it's a scrum certification that you, that you now have and uh, you know like i said i'm going to make available for you different like all of these resources i'm going to provide the links for you and I'm going to, you know, allow, allow you to download templates. I'm going to make available templates for you. And, uh, and I'm also going to recommend different uh, free Scrum courses or Agile courses that you can take. Uh, and we talked about before that you can also, you know, search for my Agile Crash course on Udemy if you, if you want to explore that other course as well, if you want to learn more about Agile. And the Scrum Body of Knowledge, the SBOC, this is also something you can find. And it's a bit of a, I guess, a bit of a, if you think about the PMBOK in, in the PMI, it's a little bit similar, you know, to that, but of course different. And, and it's just something else that, that's available for you for consultation about, you know, about Scrum. And then finally, last but not least, AgileKB.com. And this is something that I founded in 2018 to share knowledge and spread the word, you know, around the world. Uh, and just as I'm advocating more and more, you know, in different countries and, and with different businesses about, uh, you know, Agile and Scrum. And if you go there, you're going to find a lot of free information. You know, pretty much everything that I have in AgileKB.com is free. It's also a very active community, which you can join either, you know, on the Facebook group or on the Agile KB website, website itself. And yet these are all really, really valuable resources that you can explore on your own. And I'm going to, like I said before, put all the links and everything there for you.